Hello, and welcome to another episode of Solipsis Watched. I'm your host, The Social Solipsist, and this week, I watched 2019's Captain Marvel. Wait. No, Shazam. That's what it's called. Uh, you'll have to excuse my terrible calculated joke. Uh, I do find Shazam as a character funny because the character is not Shazam. It's Captain Marvel. It's just a bunch of petty IP bullshit um, that has been going on for 80 years. Something like that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Shazam. Not the character I thought I'd probably ever see adapted to um, to the big screen, but hey, DC's cinematic universe has been scrambling for something. <laughs> um, this got a lot of praise when it came out, uh, and not without reason. The DC cinematic universe has been plagued with, let's just say, problems. I'm not going to delve into all of them um, because everyone else on the internet has already done that. Um, I personally have seen pretty much every superhero movie that's come out since... Uh, I mean, basically since the 90s. To, between the 90s and the 2000s. Um, it's, including some weird obscure adaptations at least in the big screen i haven't you know watched all of the dc animated movies or anything like that but i have a lot of opinions on all of those the mcu the dcu um the you know all these other things that have gone on and the precursors to both those things um and i have lots of thoughts on those but i'm going to mostly avoid them for this because that is a rabbit hole that we cannot go down <laughs> so Shazam, in many ways, is a breath of fresh air from the rest of the DC Cinematic Universe. Especially in the post-Nolan Batman era, where there seemed, seems, seems or seemed, depending on how you look at it, to be this ongoing attitude of dark and gritty is the way to go. Um... And in a lot of ways, this film does manage to shirk that reputation. However, I am not nearly as enamored with it as most people seem to have been. And that's not to say that I even dislike it. Um, I'm just sort of middling on it. It's very... It's bland is fundamentally what it is. It's bland, and it's got some confusion about what it is, or what it's trying to be, or what its identity is in the cinematic space. Um, Shazam is an odd character to begin with, because Shazam is one of the oldest comic book, char comic book superheroes, uh, almost as old as... Um, as Superman, more or less tied with, uh, with Batman within like a couple of months of each other in 1939, I think, if I remember my, my history correctly, um, with Superman only being in 38. Shazam is old as hell. I'm, I'm just going to keep calling it Shazam because despite it, you know, the name actually being Captain Marvel, um, but it's also one that sort of fell by the wayside in a way that in a lot of ways, I think people would expect Superman have, would have fallen, you know, been, been retired. Um, but you know, uh, in a lot of ways, Superman continues on, uh, how iconic he is more than anything else. Shazam, on the other hand, like I said, not an adaptation I expected to really see, certainly not on the big screen. Shazam has uh, evolved a little bit, and I am no expert on Shazam's history or comics history in general. I dabble, um, but 
Shazam was always a little bit more silly and fun than the rest of the DC lineup. Obviously, compared to something like, well, the Batman being, you know, the headliner for quote unquote detective comics, that's DC, um, and that being a more gritty noir style. And Superman, who's was for a long time very much the like all American goody two shoes uh, savior of, um, uh, you know, American Christian goodness. <laughs> um, they've all had their adaptations over time, uh, but Shazam was always going to be a little odd, not only because. Um, he had a serious chunk of time in which people basically forgot that he existed, um, and was not on shelves. Um, but also that he doesn't really pair well with a lot of the rest of the DC characters, at least not the couple of mainline ones that most people are familiar with. So, <sighs> Billy Batson and Shazam... What, where, where do I, where do I start with this? The origin, the origin of, of Shazam was always goofy and continues to be silly and a little bit tongue in cheek in this film, but that gets directly into one of my core problems with the film, which is its tone and its inconsistency of tone. In a lot of ways, it seems to be on the, like, more comedic side. However, it simultaneously seems to take itself rather dreadfully seriously. Um, and it can be jarring to the point of, like, literally between, between shots, not between scenes, shot to shot, the tone switches. And if that's an intentional, that can be an intentional cinematic choice for effect, but here it seems more because it's muddled. Um, it also seems to be very much appealing to a younger audience in terms of both the writing and the acting. But there's also substantial portions of this film that I think are would be entirely inappropriate um, for somebody of the age that this seems to me to be targeted at. Uh, I think the, the only, my, my sense is in a lot of ways, this is really best suited towards somebody of a younger age, um, probably in their early teens. And it's not without, you know, value to uh, people outside of that age range. However, it's got some script and structural choices that really um, take a turn towards the juvenile. Not only in the, like, quality of the humor and the intelligence of the dialogue, um, but also the major themes. So let's get into the themes a little bit. I'm not going to um, spoiler read this, but there's also not much to spoil here. The, th the theme is thin on the ground. Um, and nobody will be surprised uh, to hear that, especially being targeted towards a younger audience, or seemingly so, one of the major themes is about family. Uh, this is nothing new for... Um, comic books in general that is very common however um, the the core the, the, if it's trying to get a message across it does so very sparingly and this film is not short it's over two hours long and even in that amount of time it simultaneously spends very little time addressing its theme, but also hammers it home with 
such force and yet su- yet such little nuance um, that it's sort of baffling. Again, I wonder how much of this may have been due to rewrites or um, choices by the studio to change a target audience and things to that effect. But all we can do is speculate, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time speculating. Fundamentally, there, there's, there's not a lot that goes on in the two plus hours. Um, the characters are all fairly unsubtle, rudimentary, uh, the they're they're mostly cliches the um the dialogue is it wavers there's some moments of great stuff in it but on the whole it's pretty middling to to kind of poor um and again you know that's that's my own subjective perspective based on what i had i had been look i was looking for for me for somebody in that sort of teenage range, I would expect it to be a little bit more, a little bit more suited towards that, uh, towards that group. All that said, there's not a lot to complain about. Um, it is the fundamentals are solid. The the actors, even the kids, are all quite solid in their performances. Um, obviously, anytime you put Mark Strong on screen, he's great. Zachary Levi, I think, does an admirable job of playing the uh, playing Shazam and still conveying this idea of still being a kid. Um, and even with a pretty middling script and middling dialogue, um, the delivery is still done quite well. Uh, a number of either minor actors or, or completely fresh faces, I think all do, um, a very good job and there's very little to complain about there. The sets and the costumes, while you can see some places where they clearly were like, but there were budgetary constraints. This was not a huge budget film. Like it's still not, you know, it's not in the tens of millions or it's not in the like low tens of millions, but it's, it's, I think less than a hundred million. Um, which for, you know, a superhero film is like kind of unheard of. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the sets and the costumes, the, the Shazam costumes, pretty great. They, they did a good job of like kind of taking it down to the core of exactly what it needed to be, uh, making it very, you know, iconic, but still modernized, um, without, you know, dipping into the weird man of steel, um, painted on metal suit thing that they had going there. They didn't have, they didn't have any of those failures. And I think it does a, a a good job of portraying the like cartoony nature of the thing in a live action setting. Um, the rest of the, the, the sets and things are pretty good. There's some, uh, well, let me, let me full stop there and then talk about the, the cinematography and the editing and the lighting, which is, it's a mixed bag. Um, this is directed by David F. Sandberg, who I'm not a big fan of. Um, I didn't know that until after the film though, uh, just to be clear. And, uh, I don't think he's a particularly good director. Um, I don't think a lot of this, this film looks particularly great. Um, and that's not for, uh, that, that's purely from a direction standpoint. Um, as I said, all the other, uh, parts of it are quite competent, but, uh, the cinematography is, eh, it's not offensive. It's the, 
there's there's a few moments where I'm like, oh, that looks real bad. Um, or why did you shoot from that angle or something like that? Uh, more so there are some scenes that are just unnecessarily dark or don't look like they were lit right or they were lit for a different scene and then the lighting was not reset. It's a little weird. Um, and my one actual gripe, although I was going to say major, but it's not, is that some of the CG is questionable. Again, you know, budgetarily speaking, uh, nothing looks terrible. But there's a lot of the sort of mid-2000s... Um, there's a lot of that mid-2000s kind of CG jank where things are stretching in ways that they just hope you don't see because it's only for a few frames, but um, it's something I'm acutely attuned to, um, especially after so many years of real bad CG. Uh, there, It's, you know... It's not something I actively look for. It's just something I, I notice. Um, and it's, it largely works very well where it needs to, but the, it's not the, you know, top notch CG that you can get in, in films these days. It's kind of fine, especially if you're targeting at a younger audience, which again, I suppose they are. Um, they are not likely to be as, as uh as picky as as i am um but that's you know it's notable to me honestly on the whole i don't really compare this film that much to well any superhero films um for a variety of reasons, some of which I've already hit on and some of which are attached to the structure of the narrative and the, like, the villains and, and all that. Um, rather than compare this to the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the DC Cinematic Universe, um, I would be more likely to compare this to something like the Transformers live-action series or the TMNT uh, reboot that they did a few years ago or the Power Rangers live action reboot that they did a few years ago. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, I've got some pretty mixed to poor reviews on those things and I think this film is a darn sight better than any of those. But in terms of its maturity and where the appeal is and what the visual effect that comes across is like, as well as some of the pacing and dialogue things, it feels much more like that. Um, a lot of it being cinematic spectacle for largely a younger and or less mature audience. Um, if you have seen this film and you've seen any of those, I'd be curious if you made that comparison or now that you've heard it, what you think. Um, so, of course, if you've got any thoughts uh, on any of the above, let me know. Um, yeah, so on the whole, uh, I probably wouldn't watch it again. I know they're coming out with a sequel and I'll probably see it just kind of out of curiosity and a sort of completionist compulsion at this point. But... Um, it's, it, it didn't wow me the way it seemed to have for a lot of other people, but I don't regret watching it. That's for sure. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching another episode of self Swatched. As always, if you got thoughts about this or related films, leave them in the comments because I do like seeing that. And I will see you guys next time.